huge round of applause, please, for Zoe Quinn. That's a lot to follow. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I'm, I'm taking kind of a big risk here. I heard that XOXO is a good place to give something pretty personal. Um, so I'm going to drop the ways that I've been talking about harassment um, pretty, pretty much constantly. It's, it's been like, I'm going to give you a lot of data, because at my heart, I'm still like an engineer, right? I care about that. That's how I think. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a little bit personal and a little bit vulnerable with you guys, and I hope that's OK. I'm going to talk about some dark stuff. So if you don't want to deal with that, um, by all means, will not be offended. I can't see anything anyway. So if you leave, I won't even know. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, but yeah, the takeaway should be hopeful. Um, and if you live or work online, this is very much about the internet and about the future of the internet um, and where it's going. So hopefully, you know, I'm not just talking about myself at you a lot. Um, so yeah, that's me. Um, as, as Andy said, I am Zoe Quinn, an independent game developer, artist, and most recently co-founder of Crash Override Network. We are, as far as I know, the only organization that works directly with people who are dealing with online abuse and harassment to sort of unfuck their situation, um, help them talk to people, um, and ideally advocate so that there's less of people like me in the future. Um, and Unfortunately, you're probably a little bit less familiar with that, more familiar with uh, what happened to lead me to co-found Crash Override. Um, this is mostly from August of this year. Um, this is not all of it, it's just some of it. So yeah, again, bad things, don't worry about it too much. This is just the stuff I can show you too, right? I can't, I can't show you all of the things because I don't think that's legal. Um, but yeah, in August of 2014, my vengeful ex-boyfriend uh, harnessed the ugly, sexist background radiation of the web, united them under a single banner against me in particular, and made me patient zero of what would later be called, uh, be called Gamergate. What followed was devastating. Every account that I ever had, even ones I hadn't accessed in years, was inundated with hatred, and then they were hacked, sometimes to gain more information to throw at me, um, sometimes to find the home addresses of myself and my family members and people that maybe were nice to me once and you know, threatened to murder them with police through this fun thing called swatting. Um, sometimes it was to send this poor woman named Zoe Quinn in Massachusetts that just has the same name as me, a bunch of pizzas. Um, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry. I don't know how to get in touch with you. Um, <laughs> Right-wing conspiracy sites and pundits started publishing long think pieces on my supposed sex life and how I was controlling the indie game sphere with a, a menacing network of kissing conspirators, uh, drafting me into a culture war that had been raging long before I ever even became a game developer. Even celebrities got in on it. The crappiest Baldwin and basically the human personification of a racist email forward from your uncle that you never wanted <laughs> gave it a name. And, open, and it became this huge viral thing so heinous and so obvious that I was treated to watching a simulacrum of me and people I love mush together into a single woman get gang raped by people saying the same things that people had said to me on primetime television in an episode of SVU. This sort of thing has become the background radiation of my life. Um, the threats of death, graphic details of plans of raping me, um, really weird things about me possibly being Jewish and hiding out in Europe on RICO charges. And, yeah, for, I think it's for fictional crimes against a juice salesman. Um, so you'll notice, again, that this is almost entirely from August of this year. None of this has abated. Once things get big and hot enough, then with all of the people that Gamergate has spread to, because I'm one of the more visible ones, but I am by far not the worst. It's not just feminists, it's people of color, anybody progressive, their friends, their family. One year later, it continues unabated. So one of them got picked up on terrorism charges earlier today. <laughs> not against me, not against me or any of us. They, 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 this t stuff tends to spread, so it, they made a bomb threat, and now they're going to jail. <laughs> but that's a year later, right? And this might lead you to the obvious question, which is really the thing that I want to talk about now that you're sort of briefed. Um, and this is like the TL of the deist R that I could possibly do in the situation. <laughs> so it might lead you to the obvious question, and that's the part I want to talk about today. I actually have a good idea of why. Not just from being targeted for not just the year of Gamergate, but even before that. Be not because I've dealt with hundreds of cases of other people's harassment. And again, I'm, I'm a game developer. I'm a systems-based thinker. I see the lines and where people keep having the same things happen over and over. But from kind of a weird source that you might not expect, 
this is me. Th this is teen me. You may have known someone like me in high school. I was the funny looking one who wore a trench coat and played hacky sack outside the cafeteria um, with the other greasy kids. I was the girl a cool kid had to ask on a date once because he lost a bet. I was nerdy and awkward and I didn't know how to talk to people except online. Uh, the internet was my world and it's the place where I say that I'm from and it's always been true. It was the only place I had any kind of friends or any control over my life. No one knew I looked funny, nobody knew I was poor. I was just able to play the game and talk shit with the best of them and you know, earn that sort of social status in these weird little kind of nerd circles I ran in and it was the only place that I ever felt like I fit in. I never set thre sent threats or anything like that but I did think it was funny when I'd hear somebody freaking out about one because it's just the internet, who cares? And you know, a lot of those people were women, but I was also such, in such a hurry to tell everybody in high school that I wasn't like other girls. I was a cool girl. <laughs> what that means is I essentially bought into the carefully packaged concept of what I thought being a woman meant. Being flighty, frivolous, over-emotional, and anti-intellectual. I demonized all things girly to my friends in the chat rooms that I got most of my socialization in, partially because that behavior was rewarded and reinforced by my nerdy compatriots who agreed that I was totally not like those other girls. I used the phrase attention whore the way telegrams say stop and took pride in my ability to take the mocking, disrespectful tits or get the fuck outs of my male friends and turn it back around them and usually using awful homophobic slurs because I was dealing with the fact that I was queer, couldn't tell anybody and didn't understand that about myself. But, you know, I would just hit back harder because I wasn't like those other girls. I was a cool girl, and cool, cool girls don't show weakness. Weakness is for other girls, and if I just told myself that enough, I was hoping it would be true someday. I'm pretty sure there's a word for that. <laughs> anyway, the reason I'm telling you this is that because if Gamergate had happened several years ago, and to somebody else, I would have been on that side. I wouldn't have been the ones making the threats, engaging in weird culture wars, or making weird MS Paint conspiracy threads about who made out with who once. <laughs> but I fully believe that most online mobs are made up of enough useful jerks like I was that, that hear their internet buddies saying someone sucks and fully believe them and join in on it. I was the same sort of person you see make up the bulk of online hate mobs and these dog piles. And there's some important things to know from that perspective. Because how often we talk about these issues, it doesn't really get into the structure of online harassment or the systems of how it perpetuates. And again, game designer, systems, patterns, kind of my home turf. I might be one of the people who best understands and sheds some light on the useful idiots of Gamergate and all the other hate mobs, or at least can tell you some things you might have heard before, and you know, G.I. Joe knowing is half the battle. <laughs> and from there, maybe we can gain some understanding of why this happens, and more importantly, how to reduce the amount of harm it causes. Can we stop using the word trolling? I will say this on every stage you give me until we stop doing it. Trolling is what I did back in the day. It's the stuff that if you pulled on your friends, you would still be friends with them. It's not essentially terrorizing people. And, and I guess now, as of today, I can say literally terrorizing people. So we, and beyond that, can we stop referring to a problem that we have to fight to get recognized and take seriously by the name of a fictional mythological creature? Like, how backwards is that? Modern trolling sounds as the same as the, as the shit people who follow through on it actually mean. So when targets have to deal with that, you sort of end up playing this game of Schrodinger's murderer every time you get one of those threats. Are we, are we playing with like an edgy teen, uh, an edgy teen like hot topic lord, or is it Dylan Roof? Because they post in the same places. Another thing is, and this is the thing that I think a lot of people don't understand, is that most people participating in online harassment think they're the good guys. Don't get me wrong. You do get the chaotic neutrals, but most people participating in things like Gamergate or other mob abuse think they're totally doing the right thing, like some kind of crappy internet Batman. One rather telling way to highlight this in particular is how often when I meet somebody who's been targeted in a sim similar manner as I have, hey, do they have a weird conspiracy theory about you secretly being rich? Every freaking time the answer is yes. This little mental trick of, of assuming, because like you can always find someone with the same last name that's, that traces back to whoever, and they'd be like, oh, this happened with Justine Sacco, it's happened with like every Gamergate target pretty much. It's this thought that if what they're going after is so powerful and so corrupt that they still get to be the underdog, they still get to be the good guys. I mean, just look at what happened with, when Ashley Madison recently got hacked. The same people, and if you're unfamiliar with Ashley Madison, it's a site for having extramarital affairs, which turned out to be mostly robots. <laughs> However, the same people that were standing up and fighting for me 
saw that and were like, oh good, this is justice. Never mind the fact that a few days later, at least two suicides had been linked to that data leak and that, that hacking and that doxing. Just late, two days later, people were dying. There's a lot of things to be found in a mob, but justice is not one of them. The reality of, of it is that there's no such thing as good guys and bad guys. There's just people. Sometimes we do good stuff. Sometimes we do bad stuff. We don't get let off the hook if we think we're going after a good target by doing the same sort of thing. When I was still a, a teen... <laughs> Thank you. And I mean, when I was still kind of an, an internet ass when I was a teenager, every single time I thought I was in the right, they deserved it because they had more than me, or they deserved it because they were doing something that I wish that they could. Or if in the particular case of women, they lived up to a feminine ideal I never thought I could because I was fat and sad and poor and I had like crappy 90s jeans hand me down 20 times and I could never be that. So of course, that resentment, that sadness just got to me, so it was like, oh, well, they're powerful, they have what I want, it's fine to go after them. This feeling of self-righteousness becomes even more true and pervasive when you are surrounded by people that are telling you that you're in the right, which means that inverting this can also become one of our best tools for shutting it down. This was underscored by the responses to the questions I asked people, and I, about 300 plus people, the first time I got targeted, years before Gamergate, I, I talked about 300 former trolls, trolls, you know, what made you stop? What made you grow out of it? And almost every single time, more often than not, they express that someone they were close to, respected, to uh, respected or looked up to, said that wasn't cool. That the social network supporting this kind of feeding frenzy was no longer reinforced. That's one thing that changed for me too. As I drifted away from the circle of people who shit on people for kicks and you know, started taking care of myself and got help, the help for my depression that I needed, I started making friends that were different, and they, they would be like, hey, what the hell are you doing, kid? And uh, that sense of shame disrupted this mechanism of a bad habit that had built up in myself, and for me to go, oh, wait, what, what am I doing? Furthermore, for myself and a lot of other reformed internet jerks that I've spoken with, another thing that got a lot of people to wake up and back off was this, of this gross harassing, harassing behavior was that same tiny humanizing of their targets. It stopped being this theory of a person. And this was really exemplified when, uh, after I got doxxed and people started calling my phone in mass, I answered all the time. And they'd be like, is this Zoe Quinn? And I'm like, do you not know who you, you call when you? <laughs> and they're like, oh, you know your number's all over the internet? And I'm like, yeah, I'm aware. And they're like, oh. And you can almost hear the wheels turning. And this, I had the same conversation like at least 10 times with Randos. And they were like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anybody who didn't double down on the, the garbage immediately apologized because it didn't go the way that they thought it would. I suddenly had a voice. I wasn't just words on a screen. And when you're in this sort of place, when I was in this sort of place, it was like a game, you know? And that's the thing. It's not really about the target. It's a basic empathy failure. Drawing the dehumanization, people aren't really, this, they're just symbols to people attacking them. They're weird goals, like a performative thing, like a game to see who can do the best burn. This is how things often quickly escalate, too. And for me, it was partially about belonging to something somewhere. Uh, I was part of the Chanology things back in the day, where everybody wore the dumb V for Vendetta mask and were like, Scientology is bad. <laughs> and while I started, because I, I, I did think that everything I was reading was messed up, I stayed because I made friends, and I wasn't alone. And it, there's that weird sense of bonding, and I'm not proud to admit it. And sure enough, they turned on me as soon as they found out I was a girl, but you know, can't say I didn't deserve that. <laughs> um, people, these people also tend to make artifacts and in-jokes the same any way any kind of community would. YouTube is especially bad for this. I think any time that I do anything related to a video, I'm sure in this video, if you look over, viewer at home, wherever the camera is, You'll probably see like 20 links being like, she's evil, boobs, in the side. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. Um, but, but that's the thing. They, they create these things and they pass it around in what I've been referring to as the treehouse, like they found nudie mags in the woods. Because it's a community. At, the, at its core, these harassment mobs are a community. And sometimes, it's not, when it's not about the target, it's about just lashing out at a concept. Like I said, I shit on so many women when I was younger that represented the ideals I was never able to meet and had nothing to do with them and everything to do with the fact that I was an insecure teenager. Which kind of brings me back to another point. It's not 
anonymity that is the enemy. And I see so many people say this. So many people say this. But one of the reasons I was able to deal with being a queer teenager is that I could go online while living in a scary rural town where they did not like gay people and talk about my feelings openly with other people that shared that. And I don't know if you remember, I hope you remember, there was this teenager named Leela Alcorn who killed herself and she left this, um, this, her suicide note was out there and it was heartbreaking, but there was one line in there, there was one silver lining that so many people missed and it's that because of her online community, because she was able to go there and talk about things, it kept her alive than she might not otherwise have. And that was very much the case as a depressed queer kid with no one to talk to. And I could not have done that under my name. I was terrified. And people ask me, why do you leave anonymous messages on? Why, do you, why don't you just turn that off? And it's like, I made Depression Quest. Do you know more people, and this, we confirmed this in our research, more people would rather tell their employer that they had committed a misdemeanor and served jail time than that they had ever received any kind of psychiatric care because the stigma against living with mental illness is that bad. I keep my anonymous acts on because a lot of them that I get are people needing to talk about something that's so stigmatized but talking about will keep you alive. It's not anonymity that's the problem. Anonymity is so key. Beyond that, if you don't even believe, if you just ignore all those edge cases, my worst and most egregious harassers use their legal names and make a living off of this. They have Patreons, they get paid for YouTube clicks. There's a number of people, you've probably at least, you can probably think of at least one of them, I'll not go into it because this video is gonna be posted online, <laughs> that have made backs off of, like bank off of the backs of harassing people like me. And they use their names, they build their brand. So anonymity is not the issue. Anonymity is sometimes the only thing keeping people safe. Another thing is, with all of this, you can always assume that there's going to be the sad kids, there's going to be the me's of the world, and you can deal with, like, the, the, you can focus more on the people making a profit off of this, making a career off this, but at the end of the day, are you gonna get mad at the toddler who crashed your car or the adult who gave them the keys? We need tech platforms to step up here, because beyond that, we're still looking backwards, saying, oh, it's, it's free speech, at, court cases that will take 20 years to make, and we're in tech, damn it. We can iterate fast, we can do it hard, we should be ahead of everything, not looking behind. So, really need that to step up, because again, always gonna be sad people like me, as long as there's teen or teenagers that have shitty feelings, or older people that have shitty feelings, shitty feelings are like a universal constant. <laughs> but we don't have to let mobs form on our platform as well. And we don't need to let their figureheads point the useful idiots like me on where to go. So, <laughs> I've kind of, I've said a lot of incriminating things up here today. <laughs> I mean, you have a picture of me in a fedora now. Um, <laughs> my lady. Um, <laughs> but I'm doing this partially because I want to ask something of all you, because the biggest thing in all of this is that doing better starts at home. I'm hoping by admitting to my own previous shittiness, and I'm sure periodic shittiness as life goes on because I'm human or a cyborg, close enough. <laughs> that we can start a conversation within our, ourselves. Even now, it's so easy to want to send something snarky or shitty when somebody actually does fuck up, and, but things escalate so quickly. If you can stop yourself from your hot take and consider if you're criticizing someone's actions or if you're shitting on them as a person. Consider if you're performatively bandwagoning on some issue of the day and if your hot takes are something you're doing to high five your buddies on the same way the 4chaners do in their clubhouse with me, or if you're actually calling attention to and criticizing a specific pattern of behavior, if it's about something bigger than you scoring points. Part of being in a mob is that scoring points. Are you actually expressing yourself or are you just playing the game? Nobody, no single snowflake feels responsible for the avalanche that rains down on somebody. And it's, it's hard sometimes, like especially if you have any kind of platform or any kind of voice, even just doing things that you feel like you should be allowed to do, you know, you do the thing and then you find out later, you know, a lot of people who are watching you jumped on it. We have to do better first and foremost. Don't be a snowflake in someone else's avalanche because what looks to you like this might look to someone else like this. Try to be kinder. Thank you. <laughs> no. Zoe Quinn. Thank you so much.